All right, so now we're going to take a look at the muscles of the upper arm. So we've taken a look at the bones, and I've got the drawing laid out. So you'll want to stop this, freeze frame this, and copy these down. And I've clued it off, obviously, the, the scapula, which are going to come into uh, play here uh, quite a bit. So we'll want to include them, and of course, we're going to include the deltoid. But there's quite a bit of, of attachment up to the scapula with the uh, upper arm muscles. They kind of work with the shoulder, too. Uh, as well. So we have to the left a front view, in the middle is a back view, and in the right is a, a kind of a back uh, side three-quarter view. So the first muscle I'm working with here is the coracoid or coracobrachialis, and that's going to attach to the coracoid process, that little finger muscle right there, and it's slightly back from the end of the tip of it because there's another muscle tendon that's going to attach in through there. So the coracobrachialis is under kind of in the armpit area and it's pushed back a little bit and it's kind of a sausagey looking muscle and it attaches at the top of the coracoid process and then down about roughly about halfway on the side of the humerus body in through here and that's our first muscle. This muscle really comes into play when arms of the model or the figure are raised or elevated uh, higher and we kind of have an inside view slightly of the armpit so they come up underneath. You know something as I'm drawing here to think about when you layer and you look at the muscles of this region it can get complex. Keep this in mind that these muscles are first in terms of layering then the pectoralis muscle major especially is next and then last is the deltoid muscle all the way on top. So it's kind of a layering process to that. So now we're getting the coracobrachialis muscle uh, laid onto our skeletal model here. So attaching right up underneath, right in through there you see on the coracoid process and then onto the the medial part here of the of the humerus bone and through here and then I show you over here we don't see a lot of it over here but you might see a little bit of the tendon coming down in this area so I'll draw a little bit right in through there and it would be covered up mostly mostly not all all of it running through there now I'm gonna put a lot more muscles on these drawings on this side so I'm just gonna kind of just gloss over in through here because there's a lot more information to come on top of it and you might see the coracobrachialis. Uh, the coracoid process you might not even see through here, but the coracobrachialis muscle right here, you might see a little bit of it too in through here. So again, it attaches to the medial part of the humerus there um, in, a, in roughly, uh, really generally medial on the, on the body of the, of the humerus in, in through that region. So it doesn't show up a whole lot, but it does when the arm is raised. Now we're going to talk about the next muscle, which is the brachialis muscle. Now that muscle sits underneath the classic biceps brachii, the classic double-headed arm, beautiful male, you know, when males, or even females, when they develop their muscles, those beautiful bicep muscles. But this is the brachialis, and it's underneath, and it attaches about halfway down around the deltoid uh, pr uh, tuberosity there but not on it so to the side of it because the deltoid muscles need to attach to it and it's bulky all the way down through at the uh, front of the olecranon and it's going to attach onto the the ulnar tuberosity right in through where I have it now in that in that area and so it's a bulkier muscle again it's a deeper muscle and we see it more, it will show up more to the side of our biceps muscle a little bit. And it's, and it's the arm muscle that actually attaches to the uh, humerus. The coracobrachialis there and then the, the brachialis muscle here actually attach to the humerus. The biceps brachii, which we'll get to in a moment, which you're all pretty familiar with, actually does not, believe it or not. So it's interesting for an arm muscle uh, of such power and strength to not attach to the humerus. Now, 
These muscles notice that they're a little bit of an, a bit of an angle in through here. Also, what I'm just pointing out there is also the brachialis, which show up in a destructured or demuscled model just a little bit to show you how thick it is on the medial side there and a little bit on the lateral side. So that would show through a little bit later on. Now that'll be covered up with the triceps muscle on top of that. So, But we tend to think of these arm muscles in the same way that we do the lower leg muscle, or well, really the lower leg and upper leg muscles. We have these double-headed muscles of the gastrocnemius, right, and the soleus, and then there on top, uh, as the soleus is underneath, or we have other muscles of the upper leg, the biceps femoris, and the semitendinous and semimembranous underneath muscles underneath there. Now the brachialis here on the three-quarter side view, we're getting a little bit here. It's going to bulge out a little bit, so we see that turn. Now its attachment there, in the, more in the front, around the, roughly around the deltoid tuberosity, will bulk out here, and then we'll get covered a little bit by the bone in through, and then attach to the ulna, which will be covered up in this particular view. So attaching through there, kind of a teardrop shape in this view, and it has a, it's a rounded feeling to it, so I'll tone that in so we'll see that a little further to make that clear, clear points. There we go. And then down on in, and then that tendon will reach over into the ulna, the ulna tuberosity or area whichever you want and through there. So we have the coracal process, or excuse me, coracal brachialis, and now we have the brachialis muscle, the deeper muscles. They have a little bit of influence in the form and shape of the arm. <clears throat> and now we're about to embark on the biceps brachii, which brachii is a Greek term for arm. And this will be the classic biceps uh, muscle. Now, it attaches to the coracoid process and then also attaches the first head, the medial head, attaches to the ulna muscle the, uh, per area down there. And then the other one, I'm going pretty fast here, comes through the glenoid process through the intertubicular sulcus and then attaches there on the radius down and through there. So this is going to be an interesting area to study and draw in that it does, again, does not attach to the humerus at all. So let me slow this down. Now, the tendon is in front of the coraco process, so we'll go in front of it a little bit. So that little fingering bone becomes important. It houses these three tendons and also the, the pectoralis minor. Remember that from your pector pectoralis chest muscle study. So this is the first beginning of the short head of the biceps brachii and it's going to start to cover up the coracal process and it's at an angle. So see how we're angled coming through here and it starts to bulk out. It's going to cover up much of the brachialis. So there we go. We have an, we're coming at an angle where the humerus is coming down a little straighter through there. And we're drawing the first head as if it was separate, and it's going to cover up much of the brachialis, except for some of the lower section by the elbow area. So we're coming in and down, and it's two-headed, rounded. It looks in, to me a lot like the uh, brachialis muscle, muscle, but there are two of them. And it's sitting on top of the brachialis. Remember that. So I'll try to make this clear with a darker charcoal tone coming through here. And it's going to attach onto the brachialis through ponderosis and, and uh, tendon attaching that muscle to the muscle. Whereas the brachialis it has a ligament that attaches to the ulna tuberosity. So the brachialis gets mostly covered up here. I'll read it. I'll re re uh, emerge it in a, in a little bit. You'll see that 
coming through there. So I'm just toning this down to give that little bit of clarity. And then the longer head now, through that sulcus, that canal, it's going to come up and attach to the top of the glenoid cavity. Believe it or not, it's a very long tendon. It's the longer head. And so it's a very thin tendon through that little canal. That canal was designed for that tendon. It's fascinating. Then it's going to get thicker as it comes down and connects up to the med more medial head of the, or the short head of the biceps brachii. So it gets thicker through there. So now we have two classic bicep or two, and again curves through in through that sulcus like a little canal and then again attaches right up in through there to make make sure that's clear or that's attaching. I'll use a little bit darker pencil in through there. Right on up and through. How about that? That's pretty fascinating. And on top of the glenoid, the glenoid cavity there. So that's the tendon and it starts to move quickly down in into the head part of the longer head or the lateral head, more lateral head of the biceps brachii. Yeah. They're going to split at the top and then well-developed bodybuilders or athletes will have a little sp split of the bicep where that darker line is through there, a little bit more bulkier. You can see that emerging better and more cleaner in our, in our drawing in through here. And so now the attachment is on this radius tuberosity. See how that's made for that? It's kind of shaved and it's got a little hump to it. That's where that's attaching. So if you're paying attention, and if you haven't fallen, fallen asleep already, you'll notice again that the biceps brachii, both of them, do not attach to the humerus at all. It attaches to the scapula and to the ulna and radius. So that tendon down there is where it attaches to, to the radial tuberosity. Now what I'm doing here is I'm cutting back on the biceps brachii to reemerge the brachialis right in through there so that more right aspect or medial aspect is where the brachialis will show through a little bit in the lower arm. And again, the biceps brachii sit on top of the brachialis and it gives it even a more raised a fulcrum kind of approach as we flex that muscle. These muscles are very much analogous to your hamstring muscles or the biceps femoris and the semitendinous and semimembranous muscles. And the, the triceps then become more like the quadriceps. So this is circulating around. Now I'm talking about the deltoid process or tuberosity, right? That little, little bulky head the deltoid tuberosity, it's a little bitty raised area and that's where the deltoid muscles will attach to onto the humerus. They get covered up a little bit. Now the deltoid will begin about the lateral third after the pectoralis muscles end and they'll curve and come over the top of much of this material as you can see and begin what we classically call our shoulder. Attaching to the clavicle, the lateral third, then the acromion process, and then all the way around to the acromion spine, which we won't see in this view. We'll see it, and you can see it to the right of my arm there, the other drawing. And then these two heads, there's three heads to the deltoid. The, these two heads we'll see in our view will, will spiral down and attach to the deltoid tuberosity. All three of them will, actually. So I'm going to blur this out a little bit so I can color this in, render this in, and show you a little bit better. Remember, there are three heads to the deltoid, roughly three. Uh, there, even, there might even be more than that, but we think of them as three. The anterior, or the front that I'm drawing, the lateral to the side, which is the second, and the posterior or the back, which is the third. And they all go to that bump, that deltoid tuberosity. So we really just see the front here in our drawing. We might get a little bit of the lateral. Yeah, I'll, I'll break it into just to show you that. They're, they're roughly equally um, sliced, if you will. More developed bodybuilders, this will start to split across this pretty straight. It's a very, very strong muscle. They're like shoulder pads. They're like cups, if you will. 
like medieval shoulder pads on knights or warriors or American football players or however you want to think about it. Women's shoulder pads in fashion. But what's fascinating is, is that they're very strong muscles and their attachments are fascinating. Now I'm just kind of getting back to the the scapula uh, the, on the back through the rib cage, and we'll clean up here now the the deltoid here of the front so we can see that. Now again layering is important. The deltoid is the last layer of these upper arm muscles. And see how they wrap over the humerus, they wrap over some of the biceps brachii, the coracobrachialis as well. And then the pectoralis major abuts up to the deltoid, but yet remember the pectoralis major attaches to the tuberosity, the uh, greater greater tuberosity of the humerus. So it, it, it curves and cups through where the deltoid meets the biceps brachialis and finds its way, the pectoralis finds its way through there to it detach and it twists. So it's a very tightly packed grouping of muscles. Remember this layering. Arm muscles are the, are the bottom layer, the pectoralis is the medial middle layer, if you will, and then the deltoids uh, come on top of all that. They can get confusing when you have a model. Generally, you'll just draw them kind of all together, but when we draw muscles, we can separate them. So here's the pectoralis there, and they take up, again, the medial third of the clavicle all the way to the manubrium and the sternum and they sit right in through there, you can see that, over through to the manubrium, right, and then down onto the sternal area. Attach one through six, and then they find their way through that material on the outer edge of the biceps, brachii, long head, and then we'll finish up here to get that beginning uh, arm, arm look. Now, each time we, when we do the lower arm, and we're gonna, we're gonna keep reinforcing the upper arm to make it all come together, so it might look a little bit um, abbreviated right now with the muscles. We're gonna put them uh, all together before I go on to do living dynamic studies, so we can see this all together. It can get pretty complicated in through here. So is that biceps breaking. Now we're going to go to the middle here and also to this, excuse me, the back drawing and the middle drawing. And then the drawing to the right is a back three quarters. So you can see a little bit more to the back and also the side as well. So now we're going to start drawing some uh, shoulder muscles for review here. And I'll talk a little bit while, while I'm sharpening uh, my pencil. So we've got now muscles uh, to the top of the scapula, the supraspinatus, which is um, superior, and the infraspinatus, which is going to fit in that middle fossa area of the scapula. And then I'm going to show you the teres major, which we've seen before in our shoulder discussions and demonstrations, but I'm also going to show you the teres minor. Those two muscles are interesting because they're going to be able to twist the head of the humerus and rotate it like the really rotator cuff muscle. So I'll show you those. All right, so with the infraspinatus here, excuse me, supraspinatus on top, supraspinatus on top here, broke a pencil, go for another one here. Sitting on top now of the, the scapula, inside that groove of the spine, now it doesn't sit on top of it, it still sits on the scapular body, but right in that particular groove, and to give the, the scapula some support in that, in, that, in that area. All of these muscles, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, uh, will attach to the uh, roughly the greater tubercle of the humerus. You can see me uh, drawing now sitting on top of the, the scapula. It's a very hard working bone, one of my favorite bones of the, the human figure. So sitting on top there, Okay, underneath the spine in the acromion process and re-emerging now on the head of the humerus. Remember, the head of the humerus is covered by ligaments to attach it to the scapula and cartilage inside, so there's no bone-to-bone -bone touching there. So it's quite, quite covered in material. And then the infra supraspinatus 
And of course, the infraspinatus in a moment will attach on top of that the scapula. Now, the supraspinatus right in through here sits in that fossilar fossae area or cavity of the scapula. And it, it's going to be in this relatively semi similar position of the scapula through here. So it looks about like the scapula in that position, taking up two thirds, if not a little bit more of the body of the scapula, right in through your sitting in through there, attaching to the fossae or the cavity, and then over to the greater tubercle of the roughly of the uh, of the humerus in through here. So we have that moving over. So it's, it's rounded and it's bulky. We don't see much of it in full back studies unless we have a bodybuilder. We get a little bit of it through that window between the deltoid, the latissimus dorsi, and the trapezius. It makes a little window where we might see a little bit of the rhom rhomboids and a little bit of the um, teres major and also the, the uh, supraspinalis muscle in through there. So I'm struggling with my pencils here. Unfortunately, they keep breaking. I love these softer carpathellos, but they break quite a bit. So I'm just cleaning it up here. So you can see that the supraspinatus su superior sitting on top, and it kind of merges and forms with the infraspinatus sitting in the middle fossa region there. It covers up much of the scapula, and then they attach roughly right into that, that greater tubercle area. Now, <clears throat> We have two, two more muscles here to talk about that help in movement. It's good to know them in movement of the humerus. And it is the teres major, which will think of it this way. The major is bigger, and it goes underneath the humerus. Then we have the teres minor, which is smaller, and it goes around the top of the humerus. And you're going to see how they both interplay. They're fascinating to torque and turn the the humerus ball and socket to give us a little twisting of our arm. Now I'm going to uh, draw here the supraspinatus for you and fit it into that fossa region. Notice how it's not all the way to the end of the scapula. And then of course there's where it attaches through there to the greater tubercle of the humerus sitting in through. I'll give it a little bit of bulky expression. Now we've got the deltoids to put on top of these, so I don't want to render these all the way through. It's going to be a lot of material because the deltoids will cover much of that through there. Supraspinatus. Now we have the teres major and minor. Now the major sits right at the end of the scapular region. The uh, trapezius will cover a little bit, but the teres major will come underneath that humerus. Let me get it in the right position. Make sure we have it right. Under, see how it comes into the back side, into the front area, and the minor will come on top. Let me let me make that clear. So here's the major. It's bigger. It comes underneath and attaches to the humerus in front, underneath. So that's the teres major. Now the minor sits on top of it and is smaller. It attaches and abuts to the teres major in the Super uh, infraspinatus, and it comes in front of the humerus ball there and attaches to the greater tubercle. So I want to clean this up for you and make sure you see that. Right in through there, it's these little stranded muscles, and you can see how they're differentiated. So the humerus sits in between those two muscles. Oh, there goes another broken pencil. I just kind of have to deal with it. And they sit in between it. Do you see how that sits in between? And the tricep muscles will do the same. They'll sit in between. I'll show you that in a moment. It's pretty fascinating. Those two muscles, the major coming up in behind and going in front, and then the minor, the smaller one that attaches to the lateral portion of the humeral ball, right, on the greater tubercle there, when they're contracted and energized, they torque and twist our arm forward and back. We can throw a baseball, we can throw a ball or a rock, and too much activity, uh, strenuous nature, can damage those muscles. It's in the rotator cuff region. 
So they twist it back and twist it forward like I'm demonstrating. Turning it, torquing it, twisting it, torquing it. And also when it's raised too as well. So it's pretty fascinating to, to see how those muscles uh, fall in together. All right, so now the teres major here sitting on the bottom of the scapula coming over. And remember, it will come up and come underneath all that material and attach to more of the, the anterior part of the, <clears throat> the humerus, anterior medial area. And then the teres minor now will emerge adjacent to the infraspinatus and then come in front of all that and attach to the greater tubercle of the humerus. I know it seems complicated. The humerus sits in between all that. Just remember, it sits in between all that. So do the triceps muscles, especially the the, uh, the medial head or the long uh, the long head that attaches to the scapula. I'll make that clear for you in a moment, hopefully. So just filling that in a little bit so we can see that cleaner. <clears throat> Cleaning this up a little bit. So there's the teres major, and I'll tone in the. The miners clean that up with some cutting in line, contour line, supraspinal, uh, infraspinal, spinatus. Sorry about that. I get this confused. Infraspinatus is the larger one, inferior to the supraspinatus sitting on top. And then right adjacent to it is the teres minor. Right there is where it attaches, right on that tubercle, that greater tubercle. There we go. And underneath is the teres major. It's larger and it goes back behind, which is actually more to the front of the model, the human figure. And when contracted, they move forward and back the humerus. And of course, we have the supraspinatus on top of the scapula there. So hopefully that's gotten to be clear for you. If you just practice that enough, you get it pretty pretty cleanly in through here. So now we have the triceps muscle. Now those are interesting. There are three muscles, the medial head, the, uh, the, um, the long head, which is on the more medial aspect, and then the uh, lateral head of the triceps. And they're going to be attaching to the scapula and also to the body of the humerus up high in the back part and then down to the olecranon or the the elbow uh, proper underneath. So I want you to pay attention. I'm drawing, redrawing, and showing you where the scapula is. That is important because the medial head or the long head will attach up in between the teres major and minor to that border of the scapula, right in through there, underneath the teres minor, it will ultimately get overlapped. And then it will, the, the tendon of the tricep will actually overlap the teres major. So I'm showing you where the head attachments, the tendons will attach here, and then it's going to bulk out and attach down to the elbow, the olecranon, and through here. So attaching there, all through here, and then over to the scapula at an angle, and then bulk out. I'm trying to make this clear here now. There are two, two major heads to the triceps, but three. The medial one we don't see much, and it's buried underneath the two of them. So now I'm showing you the, the tendon heads of the long head attached to the scapula border. Okay, adding they're coming at an angle a little bit too as well. And they're attaching down here to the little bit to the ulna through large, large tendon through here, and then sheathing over, roughly right in through here, and then bulking out to the majority of the olecranon through here, here, and also to the more lateral side and through here. A lot of that's going to be tendon. Now these muscles are sitting on top of the, tri the medial head of the triceps, which I won't really draw. They have an arching quality where they start. Everything I'm drawing now is more of the tendon. It's kind of like the soleus in the Achilles heel. So now we come down with the long head. It starts to bulk out and starts to really show up and starts to get more dominant through here and all the way down through the 
Alecranon curve over a little bit and have that classic sort of arched, long, muscular head till it gets more of a tendon and gets bulky on the medial side of it, just like the soleus does in the gastrocnemius. And it really has a bulky egg shape, egg form-like quality. Now, here's where it disappears inside to the scapula and the teres minor covers over it. So it fits in between the teres minor and teres major. Then we have the humerus here, body where the lateral head attaches. It starts to bulk out some, gets longer, not quite as bulky, but the two of them together, when, when you have a well-developed model, will we'll split and you'll see how teardrop shaped they are and uh, have a nice long, long run of muscle tendon head all the way down to the elbow of the olecranon or to the ulna and through there. Now, below them there, all that whole patch where the humerus is exposed underneath, that's all tendinous white aponeuroses material. Underneath these two muscles in the tendon is the medial head of the triceps, which we don't see quite as much. So let me fill this in a little bit and continue to discuss what we're seeing in through here. So these act again like the Oh, in my, in my opinion, a little bit more like the quads of, the, of, our, of our leg muscles. Kind of like the rectus femoris a little bit, if you will. Again, the same system that we have with the upper and lower leg is used in just a different look to the upper, upper arm. It's this idea of these bulky two muscles underneath uh, muscle. So that, that area right in through here, all of this, that kind of arch curve, that's all upon neuroses, tendinous material that shows up and it attaches all that together all the way down to the ulna and the olecranon. And of course this has a very, this all together has a very tube-like feeling to it. So around the form proper. Two heads, bulk, two bulky heads, coming together, just like the calf muscles of the gastrocnemius attached to the femur, the femur knuckles underneath here. And I'm just going to show you the teres major now, behind all that, coming up behind so it attaches to the, to the fr more front aspect of the humerus. So let me clean this up so you can see this a little bit better. Teres major. Terry's minor, Terry's major behind, larger and behind, and Terry's major now in front, smaller, attaching to the greater tubercle of the, the humeral head. And through here, this runs around, runs around, runs around, has a rounded kind of quality to it. It's a real nice under undergirding of that of those triceps. They're really teardropped, teardrop shapes to them. And we see a little bit of the media. I want to show you that underneath they could bulk out a little bit in this back elbow area. So we don't want to forget the the workhorse of the triceps, the medial medial area. Very important. That's so why you describe that. Bone in through there. Curvature here, curving around and through. I think that works pretty well. <clears throat> and we'll render a little bit of the striation to make that uh, come out a little bit better. So I'm about ready to show you now the, the deltoid and its attachment. We don't want to forget where the deltoid tuberosity is. It's covered up. We're going to curve to get there in a little bit and get the heads of the deltoid muscle in the back view. So we'll get a, a, a view of the back. All right, so now let's get to the deltoid here. Oh, no, let's... Um, 
yeah, let's get the deltoid. All right, so the deltoid's gonna attach roughly where I'm pointing out in the spinal process of the scapula over to the deltoid process. It's covered up a little bit, but it's about halfway down, right in through there. It's gonna curve over those triceps and cover up much of this material. Watch that, it curves. It comes up and over and attaches on that deltoid tuberosity uh, through the spine, the acromion process, up and around and over and all the way to the lateral third of the clavicle, which we won't see in this view. And then, of course, the pectoralis takes over, but it's going to bulk over, come over this material like so, have a bulky quality sitting on top of this material and bulk out and then cascade nicely down into the, the, the uh, lateral part of the deltoid, into the deltoid tuberosity. So what we're looking at is two heads of the, the deltoid now here. We're looking at uh, the, the posterior part, the back part, and also the lateral part. So the posterior ends roughly right there on the acromion process of the spine. The trapezius will cover some of that, and of course it wraps around the acromion over to the clavicle, and then that that head, the split of the uh, the back to the, the middle or the posterior to the lateral, will be roughly right in through uh, here. I'll show you in a moment. I'll clean this edge up a little bit. That shoulder pad, classic shoulder pad look to it. And it'll put a little bit of shadow underneath to show that. Now, this is on top. The deltoid is on top of all this. I think it's, it should be pretty obvious, hopefully, to you. And see how it runs around the scapular spine, the acromion process, and to the, to the clavicle as well. So we'll clean this up a little bit further. I'm going to leave the the other muscles alone, I'm not going to erase them out much here. And so uh, the other deltoid on the right, I will when we get to that in, in a little bit. I'll get to that in a moment, and we'll, we'll take care of that. So cleaning up the, soup, the infraspinatus here and through, and then showing again where the deltoid emerges and overlaps, tops out, would show these muscles uh, uh, by covering up the muscles actually of the, the deltoid. Now here's the split between the, the posterior and the lateral deltoid heads. There's three of them. Posterior, lateral, and anterior or back, front, and lateral, or back, lateral, and front. Or you can think of them as one, two, and then three right there in any which way you want. But the outermost is the lateral, more lateral side. Now I want to be over here. Let's do the same thing. Let's put on the triceps and the uh, biceps brachii, and then also the deltoid, and we'll end in this uh, this drawing here. So now the triceps are again. We have the bicep over here, tricep on the other side, working together to lift, to flex, and erect the muscles. Now I want to catch this scapula again so you'll see it. Here's the actual bone part of it going to the glenoid process right in through there below the glenoid cavity. Lower part of it right at the end of the glenoid cavity roughly that's where we'll have the attachment and of course the humerus attachment will be on this side. Now we're at three-quarter back roughly are almost profile, truly. It's it's kind of a uh, three-quarter back and then slightly profile, but not, not quite clean profile, which is good to see. So you're going to get this classic shape of the tricep, this tear duct shape with a long run here of the heads running around beautifully like so. That's a nice, nice look to them. And we're going to split this view here. And through. Now remember, up underneath the teres major and then covered up by the minor. So we'll just make sure that's clear through there. So bringing down the medial head of the long head of the tricep. We'll show this a little bit more maybe than what we should, but that's okay for a diagram. Diagrams are mm, sort of sort of 
realistic representations, but they're also kind of idealized with no blood and veins and fat and all that. So we're just getting an idea of learning these forms. And then we have the lateral head attaching to the humeral body here, teardrop out and then downward. making itself apparent there and onto. So the attachment is the humerus and then the ulna for the lateral head. The medial or long head is the scapula to the ulna, the olecranon area. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit. Again, we're we're inside the teres major because the teres major is on the opposite side, and then the minor will, would cover would cover us up there. So make sure we have that cleaned up and clear. Fitting notching right in through there nicely, and we'll split these heads up a little bit, coming downward. And then attaching to the elbow, the olecranon on there. And up to the body of the humerus. Not the ball, but the, the body of the humerus. And moving downward. And we might see a little bit of medial part running through there as well. And we'll turn this in to clean this up a bit and I'm going to show you the deltoid so I'll, I'll uh, not get too dark with these. I'm trying to make the deltoid the posterior and the lateral head a little bit darker. Alright, so let's see that. Let's see the biceps brachii first. So we're going to see the the brachii, the biceps brachii, more of the lateral head here, or the or the long head, if you will. Clear up the bone here a little bit. What's left of what we're seeing? So we see the the tendon coming down, that will be on top of the sulcus, or in through the sulcus, and then cascading down. So we'd see it on top of the brachialis. We get maybe a little bit of the medial part, or the short head of the brachialis. Remember, there are two of them out through here so we'd see that emerge here. I'll clean that up for you in a moment. In through here so the brachialis, biceps, brachialis muscles both. It's a teardrop shape, bulky and then starting to thin out a little bit through here and then their tendons will run down. Remember the lateral runs to the radial tuberosity and the medial runs to on top of the brachialis. Looks like I've got a bum pencil again. Tough on those pencils. There we go. We just picked up the lead and worked with it. And just keep on rolling. Keep the camera rolling. There we go. And now with the split should be about right in through there. So I'm going to clean all this up so you can see it a little bit better. First you want to get the overall shape and you can get more of the specifics in through there. So we've got now that coming through of the biceps brachii and then disappearing behind the humerus a little bit. There we go. Get that head showing and I'll pick up some dark here in a moment. Charcoal in and we'll get that cleaned up. There we go. So the outer edge of the brachialis. There we go. humerus to brachialis and then the more lateral aspect of the brachialis this curve against this curve coming through with her muscles the split through there and then that again that tendon will come on down and show through the olecranon a little bit and then down to the radial tuberosity and we'll split this bicep just a little bit on this side. 
conceiving of this one a little, a little bit more profile so we can get a little bit more material through that. This view, this kind of profile three quarters, I've got a, it's really kind of two different views I'm showing you, but they're so slight that it's, it works out pretty well. It's a good thing about diagrams. Really, to learn, do a lot of these, do a lot of diagrams, and of course do active diagrams, and you'll begin to see it on the model, and then when you draw from observation, and from when you start making art, you really get a good feel for where they're at. So I'll clean this up a little bit so you can see that, thin that out a little bit. Just remember that the brachii sits underneath, so that little space between the humerus and the, the brachii is the brachialis underneath there. So we're about ready now for the deltoid. Let's get a little striation to that. So we'll feel those muscles there. There we go. Of the bicep, bicep brachii. There's two muscles of the arm, essentially, with those wonderful long tendons. And again, they don't attach to the humerus at all. So you have these major arm muscles, and they don't attach to the humerus. It's fascinating. So cleaning that up for our last run, and I'm going to put the deltoid on. You can see the deltoid process here. You can see it. So starting here, right? Running a chrome with a chromium process and down to the deltoid process on the humerus, right there, my pinky is. That's where we're going for. So when you know where your attachments are and your origins and all your attachments, you can, if you know the shape, it's a pretty simple process. Whoop, it's going to curve around and go there. So let's do that now. So we'll get the overall shape of the head of the deltoid and then we'll split them apart into two. So across the spine, the acromion process, and of course it wraps around the clavicle, which we don't see a lot of here. And then coming over that shoulder, it gets pretty bulky. That muscle bulks out. It gives a lot of protection to the humerus, the lateral part of the humerus, and it's going to attach right in through on that deltoid process. So underneath, this is all on top of all the muscles we've just drawn. It has a kind of cascading curving effect to an S-curve. Then it moves down, and there's our attachments. So that deltoid process really takes on quite a big bulk. And then there's the split of the posterior to the lateral deltoid head right through here. There we go. So we see that coming through. So we have that very much shoulder pad protective shapes like a medieval knight or a warrior or um, fashion kind of uh, statement, if you will, or American football football player with shoulder pads. They're protective and this protects all this material. So I'm going to tone this in further so you can see that. I'm going to keep it loose so we can keep the video short, relatively short. So you can see how this is protective and covers over. And this is two of the three heads. All three heads are showing in this, this drawing. From the left you see the front or the anterior and the lateral and then these two you see the lateral and in the back. And so let's clean all this up even further. So that deltoin on top of those muscles sitting on top of the spine and the acromion process clavicle. And then where it ends on those bones, that's where the trapezius takes over. So your neck and your back muscle of the trapezius sits on top of the clavicle, partly the acromion process and then the spine, and it comes down the scapula. So that's how all these parts that we're drawing, each different body area, are integrated together ultimately to make a finished human human form for sure. Alright, let's bulk out this head so we can clean this up a little bit, these two heads of the deltoid. You can think of the deltoid as one and then you can split them apart, which is fine. And they turn, they curl over, so 
This really can arch over, so I'm going to give some contouring expression through line, through all this, so we can see that over through. And then we'll clean up the triceps here. those double head of the triceps coming out so all these curves start to work together that bulges out a little further a nice kind of strong flexed position just to show off the positioning here now just cleaning up the drawing so as we review and recap the muscles of the upper arm the coraco brachialis, the brachialis, the biceps brachii, the deltoid, and then of course the triceps. All all these muscles working together and then of course the muscles on top of the scapula, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres major, and then the teres minor. And know that those two muscles, the major and minor teres, work to torque and twist that humerus to rotate it some. And just kind of cleaning up and showing a little highlight or striation on the the deltoid form itself. And that's pretty much it for the upper arm. So what we'll go on to now is the lower arm. We'll talk about the ulna and radius, and we'll talk we'll do a separate lesson, and then the muscles of the lower arm, and then we'll put we'll do all these together too as well to make them fit together. I think that's going to be important to see. We'll continue to work on all of these together so you can get that reinforcement and then lastly after that we'll do the hand and we'll work on all those and put those together. And this is showing you now a little bit of the the rib cage coming through. All right, so that's it. So now let's go on to the bones and the muscles of the lower uh, arm in addition to just reviewing uh, the bones and muscles of the upper arm together. All right, I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.